This month, lucky sky watchers on Earth will get to experience a total lunar eclipse, a supermoon, and a blood moon, all on the same night. Welcome to Space Chat. This week I'll be talking all about the exciting upcoming lunar events. Now if you're new to Space Chat, this is the weekly show where I come on every Friday to answer your questions and take a deeper look at Earth, the universe, and beyond. So let's talk about the moon. On the night of May 26th, or between May 25th and May 27th, depending on where you are on the globe, there will be a total lunar eclipse. Now, during a lunar eclipse, the moon enters Earth's shadow as Earth moves between the sun and the moon, uh, blocking the sun's rays from directly reaching the moon. In a total lunar eclipse, which happens usually about once every two and a half years depending, Earth's umbra, or the central darkest part of its shadow, hides all of the moon's surface. But this year during the eclipse, when the moon isn't obscured by Earth's shadow, it will be especially bright, as it won't just be a lunar eclipse, it will also be a supermoon. Now, supermoons occur when the moon looks, well, super. Uh, it looks extra big and extra bright in the night sky. But the moon doesn't grow in size uh, on a supermoon. It just looks different from our perspective on Earth. During supermoons, the full moon is at or close to its closest point to Earth in its orbit. Now, the moon doesn't orbit Earth in a perfect circle. Rather, it orbits in an elliptical shape. So each month, it hits the point in its orbit closest to Earth and the point farthest away. And supermoons happen when this closest point in the moon's orbit coincides with a full moon. So a supermoon is when it's both a full moon and the moon is at its closest point to Earth in its orbit. So. It's gonna look as big and as bright as it gets. Now, this May, this won't be just a total lunar eclipse and a supermoon. It also happens to be what's known as a blood moon because it will look bright red in the sky depending on where you are and might not look bright red. We'll see what happens. Now, during a total lunar eclipse, during totality, or the point when Earth's shadow is fully obscuring the moon, the moon can turn this bright reddish color that can be seen just with the naked eye. Now, the moon itself, like it isn't growing and getting bigger, it isn't changing color, but rather sunlight that usually bounces off the moon, making it visible and bright to us, is instead refracted through and filtered through Earth's atmosphere before getting to us. So, <laughs> so all of this light that usually from the sun bounces off the moon, makes it bright to us, it's kind of obscured by our own planet's atmosphere, giving it this unusual appearance. So the moon can look red. It can even look dark brown, gray, or bright orange during a total lunar eclipse. This year, the moon is also known as the super flower blood moon. That's a mouthful. Now, to see the supermoon, you can simply go outside and look up. It will rise in the east around sunset and then set in the west around sunrise, and it will be bright and big in the sky. Hard to miss. Now, the eclipse is a bit tougher to see. The total eclipse will be visible near moonset in the western continental US, Canada, Mexico, most of Central America, and an additional few countries. Well, it will be visible just after moon rise along the Asian Pacific Rim. Now, totality will last for about 14 minutes and 30 seconds, so it's pretty brief, so it might be kind of tough to time it out and see totality. But for those of you who are <laughs> tenacious and will be watching it throughout the night, fingers crossed you might see it. Now, a partial eclipse, or as the moon moves in and out of Earth's shadow, that will be visible from Canada and the eastern United States just before the moon sets. And it'll be visible from India, Nepal, Western China, Mongolia, and Eastern Russia just after the moon rises. And sky watchers in Eastern Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands will get to see both a total and partial lunar eclipse. Pretty lucky. So 
that is the gist of it. Uh, and now I'm going to move on to my favorite part of Space Chat question and answer. So every week people send us in questions over social media or through email and these are questions about space, about the moon, about eclipses, uh, about human space flight, about everything. Uh, so if you have a question about space or an idea for a future episode, always feel free to reach out. So without further ado, I'm going to dive into this week's questions. All right, Carol asked us over email, do supermoons change the tide? And actually, yes. Supermoons are full moons, as I mentioned. Full moons that coincide with the point in the moon's orbit where the moon is closest to Earth. Now, during full moons, both high and low tides are more extreme. So during supermoons, when the moon is extra close, that effect is even more extreme. So yes, super moons can influence the tide like full moons, regular full moons can. Jen on Twitter asks, where do the full and super moons get their names? This is a great question. So I mentioned this is called the flower moon or the super blood flower moon, lots of different names. Um, now, it depends on the moon and it depends because different communities, different cultures, different regions around the world have different names for different phenomena in the night sky, including full moons and things like super moons. Uh, you know, a lot of the names that we use have originated with different Native American tribes and different communities, but it is tough to say generally about all full and super moons because it really depends on each one. Oftentimes the names coincide with the time of year that those moons arise. So it's May, the flower moon makes a little bit of sense, um, but again it really does depend. Rhea asks over email, can we send you guys our super moon pics to include in your articles? Absolutely. Uh, we often get lots of great photos sent in from readers all over the world of super moons and of other cool space things that they find. Um, and sometimes we are even able to publish them with their permission. Uh, so yes, I will post a link in the comments below with the best place for you to send your awesome super moon and eclipse photos. Craig on Twitter asks, is Earth hit with more solar radiation when a full moon reaches such close proximity to Earth? Uh, so solar radiation, we know, hits Earth directly from the sun. Sun is beaming down all the time. Um, however, a small amount also reflects off of the moon, bouncing from the sun to the moon and then onto Earth. So you could suppose that this might be slightly heightened during a full moon when the moon is a little bit closer and that's bouncing onto us a little bit closer. Um, but again, the overall effect is in general very slight. So this change would be extremely, extremely slight. Mora on Twitter asks, for our next moon mission, what if we waited to launch our astronauts during the next supermoon? Would the trip be shorter? So that's an interesting possibility. Now launch windows, especially when crew and astronauts are on board, have to consider a lot of factors. Uh, but it's possible that the moon earth distance could be factored in when humans return to the moon. Now it's possible the trip might be shorter. It's difficult to say because the length of a mission is dependent on many things and doesn't always directly correlate with the distance between two things. So there could be many other factors that play into how long it actually takes them to get to the moon. Uh, but currently actually uncrewed missions to Mars, like the recent Mars rover we saw land, depend very heavily on how close Mars is to Earth because that difference uh, in distance is so extreme when Mars is farther away that it would be much, much, much more difficult to send anything to Mars when Mars is much farther away. And this is also being considered for future astronaut missions to Mars. Maggie on Facebook asks, when's the next supermoon? Next week, May 26th. <laughs> um, so make sure, look up, it's going to be incredible. Louise on Twitter asks, do you need to wear glasses when watching a lunar eclipse? This is a great question. And 
you do not. Since you are really just viewing the moon, uh, it is safe to do so without any special eyewear or equipment. Now, during a solar eclipse, however, you do need special glasses to look at a solar eclipse because uh, even looking at the eclipse sun can be extremely dangerous and can cause serious, serious eye issues. Um, so that is very, very serious, a, a safety precaution for viewing solar eclipses, but lunar eclipses, we're in the clear. All right, Ali up on YouTube asks, when will the 2022 lunar eclipse take place? Uh, 2022 will actually also have a total lunar eclipse and it will be next May, uh, May 15th to the 16th. Marsha on Facebook asks, how many kinds of solar eclipses are there? Great question. Uh, so there are four types of solar eclipses, total, partial, annular, and hybrid. And for lunar eclipses, there are three, total, partial, and penumbral. All right, jjock39 on YouTube asks, does the moon get much colder when Earth's shadow falls upon it? Really interesting question. Now, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to trap heat in. So it's possible that because the moon's limited heat escapes so quickly while in the shade, while eclipses don't last very long, the moon might get a bit colder temporarily while in the shadows. Really interesting question. Gabriel on Facebook asks, how long is the totality of this kind of eclipse? So this kind of eclipse, a total lunar eclipse, totality can range anywhere from a few seconds to a hundred minutes. Uh, but this lunar eclipse, it will be about 14 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, Peggy on Twitter asks, how differently are lunar eclipses observed around the world? That they look different depending on where you are. Um, so because you don't need special equipment to view them, people around the world get to enjoy lunar eclipses easily. Uh, now they don't look different in appearance really much around the world, um, but it is possible depending on where you are for different lunar eclipses, you may only see partial while others see the total lunar eclipse. Again, it depends on the eclipse and it depends where you are. All right, that was all the time we had for questions today. Thank you all so much for sending those in. And before we go, let me tell you what's new in space. So recently, Blue Origin auctioned off a ride on its first crewed launch, and the bid is currently at $2.6 million and could very well continue to rise as we near the launch. Also, plutonium from space was found in deep sea crust. China unveiled its first Mars photo from its Zerong rover after the rover successfully landed on the surface, making China the second nation to ever successfully soft land on Mars. Also, UFO answers could be coming soon as the US government is set to report on mysterious sightings next month. Whew. It's always busy in space. So this has been Space Chat. Thank you all again so much and join me again next Friday. And as always, stay tuned right here at space.com. And if you ever have a really interesting space question you want me to answer, send it to me. Social media, email, space.com. We are here to hear your questions. Take care.